All right, construction cronies, welcome to a drywall video. I know it's been a minute since I've done one of these, but listen, guys, if you want to learn how I drywall this beautiful bulkhead, stay tuned. I'm telling you this right now. So you can see right now I'm putting a scrap piece of drywall on the bottom here where the lid is, and that is just to hold uh, the top up. So basically what you want to do is you always want to drywall top down. So what I mean by that is you're going to do the face of a bulkhead first always, and then you're going to do the bottom, the lid, because you want the joint to be at the top, okay? So always do your fronts first. The One of the things you're going to do is you're, you're, you always want to put a, your first piece in, like a gravy piece. Find that somewhere so that you can have some way to take your numbers off of, to take the for the cutouts for the ducts and the I-beams and all that. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to cut out I-beams and ducts in this video, so... Don't you worry. Do you guys stay tuned? This is a really good video on drywall. Um, so this is this is the easy part, but there's something you need to take into to, to remember. So the first piece that is against base building, base building is not always level. Okay, just keep that in mind for later. You can see here, right, flush, and I've used that piece all the way along, and uh, it looks great. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how I did all this. Just just chill. So you can see here. Uh, my first piece, there was no gravy piece, but I have a wall here that I could come off of. So basically what I'm doing is, uh, let's see here. Let's grab a yellow today. So this is the track, okay, right here or where the end, of the end of the wall is. So I can get all my numbers for this I-beam from here, okay? There's going to be a number here, number here, and number where I just first drew there. Those are your overs. So you always need some way to get those overs. Is what, I, what I call them, right? Overs. So it's uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's very standard. I-beams are, are like, every time you're doing tops, you're going to do I-beam. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just what it is. So we get that first piece in and uh, then the ducts. Then we're going to do the ducts, okay? So you can see here. Actually, let me just play this a little bit longer. What I do is I use a two-foot square, okay? And it's, this is great. I still do this today as a journeyman, guys. I'm a, I'm a veteran journeyman, and I still do this. Just so it just makes it easy, okay? Because when you're guessing your up and ups and overs, um, you know, you're eyeballing everything. On small pipes, I can I can always uh, guess uh, estimate the uh, the centers, but on these bigger ducts, it's best when you just set, uh, square over to the bevel, okay, right? Square over to the bevel, make a little tick to where it is, you see, and um, and then that way you can not only get your um, uh, like you, the 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 exact up and like the top and bottom of your cutout. But when you get that done, you see, I can find my center and the size of the duct. So up 34, whatever there to center. And now when I'm going from the bevel over, it's all I have to do is add four inches to that number. And I have my center to over. And it's perfect every single time. When you use a square, it takes two, two minutes of work or two seconds of work, sorry. And you get perfect cuts every time. So get used to using a square. Um, and then you get the size of the pipe. So when you have a circle cutter, which you'll see later on the video, you just set your circle cutter. Okay, so I got my, my measurements. And so now I'm going bottom up to center. And I'm going, uh, this is like right to left um, over. So this is uh, this is actually the, the cutter on the front of the bulkhead, not the one you just saw, but the first one you saw. So, uh, the, but that's how you find your centers is you use your two foot square, square it over to the bevel. The best thing you should do, though, is is when you're butting into a wall that you leveled or uh, that you framed and you know it's level, okay? Then you're you're squaring over perfect. Um, if not, what you do is you find a piece somewhere in the middle of the bulkhead or or uh, somewhere somewhere in your middle of the tops where there's no cuts. And what you do is you laser that top in so it's perfectly level all the way up. So it might be like a four foot piece on top of a twelve foot sheet. Okay, so laser that top in uh, or use a four foot level, whatever. Just just make sure it's level. That way, when you're squaring over your numbers, everything works out perfect. So in this situation here, you see I'm cutting straight across the sheet. You don't always need to do that. 
when you're cutting out the, the 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 doing the cutouts of the duct with your router, always put it on a bit of an angle towards the outside. Okay, when you're when you're cutting those out, that gives you a little bit of an extra playroom. Uh, but I have some, a couple other tricks to how to put in uh, these sheets, these tops, like around ducts and I beams. Like you can back cut them and break it so that the paper on the front doesn't break, so that that'll allow you to get the the piece in and stuff. I'm going to show you a couple examples of that coming up real soon here. But I, I always do a, like a light rasp on my cuts. That way, is the pieces go together perfectly. So when you're doing a bulkhead like this, okay, yeah, you go, you're going, uh, you're four screws in the bottom, and you're putting your your screws in the field, four in the top always. There's a there's a big I beam up here where you you can't really get your drill in, and as long as your sheet is secure, you're good, right? And that's why I cut this this sheet straight across this the middle. This is how we do it. <laughs> this is how we do it, right on. And it's because of the I beam in front of me there. It would have been harder to get a little piece in. Cut it straight across. Sometimes a bigger duck, it's just best to cut straight across. Okay, so right here, I'm measuring the top and the bottom here. Okay, this is important because I put, uh, this is where I said pay attention because we put the our first sheet against base building. Base building may not be level. Most often, it's, most often it's not level. So I'm measuring my height, both sides, and my overs, like the width uh, on the top and the bottom. Right here is a little trick I've learned. So I'm going to, I'm going to make an X uh, to my over and my up on the one side, and I'm going to make my up on the, on the bevel side. Okay, because they're all angled cuts. Okay, so how do you do cut an angle cut so long? Well, check this out. Use your Olfa knife. Make a little groove in the back, but don't cut the paper in the front. Okay, just make a little groove in the back. Put your chalk line on like that. Put it to the X you just made, right? I hope you guys understand this. I'm, I'm going a little fast here, but um, I, I, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. I totally, I will definitely get back to you guys. Um, just, yeah, I... Please, uh, if you do have questions, leave them down below. I will get back to you. And it also helps me uh, improve my videos in the future. And then, yeah, I'm using my T-square to cut the angled uh, top part. So this is the end piece for the outside corner. This is like the main feature of the whole bulkhead, okay? Uh, people are going to walk in the store here. It's a chop leaf restaurant, actually. People are going to walk in. They're going to see it. And then when I chalk, uh, blue chalk is actually better than black. I just actually only had black here. So, But there's a, a blue chalk is best on drywall, by the way. Just so you guys know. But yeah, look at this. Watch this trick. Whoop! Boom! And then the other one breaks too. Boom. Like that. It looks like It's almost like I've done it before, right? But no, the more you guys do it, the more comfortable you get with drywall. And, and you get the trick. You get to figure out these little tricks as you go along, right? I wasn't taught half of this stuff. I just figured it out as I went, right? But um, it's good stuff. And rasp all your nice cuts and ends, okay? Rasp them, okay? Because honestly, what I call, I call them barnacles. But like the, how the ends, there you go. So you see? So technically, you want to be a quarter inch uh, behind that end. So, uh, you know, up to a quarter inch behind your, your corner, okay? You want to leave a little room for the corner bead and the mud. All good, right? So you see how tight that is? Now let's take a look at the I-beams for a second. Hold on here. Boom, boom. So the, one of the things is 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 like draw, drawing your your cutouts is is easy, okay? Getting getting the sheet drawn out and and cut out. So say for example, we're measuring this way, okay? We're going to measure to the inside of the beam here. We're going to measure to this side of the beam and that side of the beam, and that's basically it. Uh, we're also going to put our tape measure in and measure back to the inside on the other side, okay? It's usually like two and a half, we'll say, okay, two and a half inches. Okay, so when you're drawing it on the sheet, okay, you draw the one side and the other side here, and then you know, and you, then you know the inside of the other side of the beam is two and a half inches back from here, and that's perfectly good. And then what I do is I take these marks and I just use them the same on the top. I don't measure the tops; I just measure the bottom, and that's it. It always works, guys. It always works. Okay, you don't ha unless your sheets are way out of level, but um, as long as you got a level go here. Yeah, or even close, you're gonna you're gonna be bang on every time. Okay, don't waste too much time with um, with like measuring the tops. Okay, just measure the bottoms and the inside, and then measure one back, and you know every I beam I got to go back two and a half inches for the other side. Now uh, this one here is like yeah, see measure this side and then that side. So these two sheets I had put together. 
and cut them all at once. But what I did was I messed up on the one side and I, I went to like the 52 instead of the 50 ha or the 51 half instead of the 50 half by accident. I went to the, the one inch higher, which happens all the time. But you see how I do? I measure back from that uh, inside of that I beam back to the bevel. Okay. And then there, there it is. You measure back inside, right? And you got what three inches there or whatever? I don't know. It's 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 a little weird on the video, but whatever it is, just make sure you go back on that. And then we're rounding our our corners, okay? And then our ups, we're always measuring our ups, okay? So I give it like an like a sixteenth to an eighth, right? Because then the router bit will give you that little extra room. So don't go too crazy big, okay? Because a lot of times what they want is a is a quarter inch uh, cocking bead around all that. But uh, the cutouts are where you got to go. So the first thing you want to do when you're when you're drawing out your tops is draw out all of the steel stud. So headers, a track, uh, studs, you got to draw out where they are. The rounded part here, I'm rounding those for the inside welds, okay? Because the, uh, the, the I-beams have welds on the inside, and that's why I'm measuring back. So sometimes, too, these sheets are hard to get in because there's lots of cutouts. But there's a way you can back cut on the brown side of the sheet and bend and bend the bend it in inwards and bend it over. OK, so oh, don't think just like two dimensionally here, like think think four dimensionally here. OK, um, as long as the, the paper isn't broken on the front, you don't got to tape that. OK, now, if you back cut like horizontally, you want to put your screws on the top and the bottom. But vertically you're pretty much good uh want to see an example yeah because of, of the ties you see the ties there from the duck they got in the way of putting the sheet in so let me stop that right here for one quick second so what i mean is what i what i did is i back cut this sheet on the brown side here and i flipped this over and that was able i was able to get the sheet in and and then I folded it back over the pipe and it was able to fit in there. OK, I also did the same thing here, I think, at least twice on this wall. But yeah, uh, when you got these ties here, OK, you can you can back cut these sheets and fold them so that you don't have to tape the front. OK, you don't the most the, the, the you what you want to do is you want to minimize these joints the most you can because they're butt joints and they take a lot to tape. OK, so just be very clever. Uh, with your with your layout and always mark the steel perfectly okay on your sheets that's the first thing you do is mark your steel not only does it give you um, uh, like it gives you an air like an idea too of where when you're putting your marks on of where exactly to go but look how beautiful that looks guys look at how beautiful okay so it, I'm serious guys if you guys have any questions at all please leave them down below in the comments this is Chris guys from construction cronies we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. If, like, seriously, guys, I'm here to help you guys drywall and steel stud for, for sure. But if you guys want to learn how to manage jobs, estimate jobs, just just be the best you all best you can be on construction, man, please subscribe.